With only a handful of races remaining in the 2023 1UP Turbo Truck Series season, the championship is winding down to its conclusion, and if any, if the last two races are anything to be an indicator of what the championship picture is going to look like, they, well, Kev Shearer's already got one hand on the championship trophy. Can anyone try and dislodge him from it over the next 80 laps here at the historic North Wilkesboro Speedway, where dreams have been crushed and dreams have been lifted up into the limelight here in this tiny little short track in Wilkes County, North Carolina. And alongside me to bring you all the action for tonight's race is James Ellison with us this time. We've got Ryan Griffin taking, we've got a little bit of a swap. He's going to do the superstar race with us tomorrow night, and James Ellison's going to do the truck race with us here tonight. It's great to have you with us, but... The main story going into this race is twofold. One, can Kev Shearer win three races in a row and become the first driver in Truck Series history to do that? And can he build a big enough points gap to where he could potentially lock up the championship when we head to Rockingham this time in two weeks? Well, there's a number of ways this could play out. Of course, I'm sure he, would, he wouldn't be a fan of hearing me hear the negatives. If something happens today... He, he's going to have to really fight hard, but the streak, he, hot streak he's on, if he wins three in a row, not just really, not only will he be making history, but he'll definitely be setting, he'll definitely be making it a whole lot easier going into Rockingham for himself. Definitely, because Kev Shearer has won the last two races in the 1UP Turbo Truck Series. He won at Michigan, and he won at Talladega. What can he do here on the short track at North Wilkesboro? He starts from the third position here tonight, as we can bring you the rest of the starting lineup for tonight's 80-lap race. Angel Gutierrez gets his first career pole position, alongside Nelson Reeves, the highest starting playoff contender, in second. Shearer, as we mentioned, starts third, alongside Francois Chastain. And Jensen Nomina completes the top five. But I honestly expect this to be a bit of an, odd, an oddball race. We're going to have cars making their way from the back to the front and vice versa. It's going to be a very chaotic race, I feel. And the bottom lane is going to be critical. This is not a multi-groove racetrack. You need to be on that bottom groove if you're going to have any hope of making passes today, and you're going to want to make them while the tires are still good. Uh, yeah, definitely. Looking at a lot of the people who are starting on the inside, Gutierrez, Shearer. Well, Shearer, we've already talked about what he needs to do. And then... Look, quite a few people here that their trucks if their trucks are good enough, early on, they're going to be making some moves. And who knows where the winner of this race will come from. It's anybody's guess what this is going to be like. We've never raced the trucks before at North Wilkesboro, but we're about to find out what they can do. So with that being said, we've got 40 trucks lined up on the grid, and we are ready to bring you 80 laps of racing action from the historic North Wilkesboro Speedway. This is the 1UP Turbo Truck Series from North Wilkesboro, and the green flag is mere moments away from falling on the field and getting this great race of ours underway. The field rolls through turns 3 and 4, heading towards the restart zone. Gutierrez and Reeves on row 1, 72-71, taking us to the green flag. It's in the air. We're underway at North Wilkesboro. Looks like Reeves gets the better launch off the line, but that's not going to last very long because this inside line is critical to success around here, and already Gutierrez is pulling out to a decent lead with Kev Shearer directly behind it. Yeah, it actually looks like Shearer is giving him a bit of a push because... We know where he wants to be. We know what his goal is at the end of these 80 laps. As lap one is complete, Gutierrez gets gets to take the credit for it. And now he and Shearer are clear ahead to the top two spots. And Nomina in third is also clear. So these guys are quickly making work of that out, quick work of that outside lane. And you can see Bronson Minnick. He started back in seventh. He's already up to fourth. He's bringing along Brandon Smith, Brian Grigsby, DJ Curtis. They've all, they all started on that inside lane, and they're all already in the top ten. That just goes to show you how important it is to get a good launch. And I'll tell you one truck that, that I was looking at back there, one of my own trucks, the, the 31 driven this weekend by Ricky Freeman Jr., started on the inside, but must have got bumped to the high side because that's where he is back there at the moment, falling back like everyone else except with some exceptions side by side now among teammates Minnick and Nomina and for Bronson Minnick this is a important race after his devastating 
run of luck in the last few races. He is on the brink of championship elimination as they run right now. But he's giving it his absolute best to stay within sight of this 0-2 machine. Because as long as he can finish ahead of that Mahindra Tractor's Toyota, he will be able to, fin to maintain a, albeit slim, presence in the championship fight. But we're on lap number six now. And Gutierrez still holds the lead over Kev Shear. My question is, when will the O2 try and get that bonus point for himself? Uh, I would say he's going to be patient right now, but I don't think he's going to stay patient too long because we both know he wants as many points as he can get. He'd love to get max points for sure, but that's going to be a tough, tough call to make with so many good trucks and drivers in this field. Absolutely. We're looking at some right here. Earl Sear, who is Shear's closest challenger in the championship. He started 17th today. He's already up into the top 10. He's already gained nine spots. And look at all the side-by-side -side action further back in the field. But up at the front, it continues to be a single-file conveyor belt of about seven trucks strong. And right in the middle of that is the two Finguy Saitomi Motorsports trucks. Brian Grigsby in the black and green 92. DJ Curtis in the tan number 22. Curtis has started only a handful of races this season, but he's finished every single one of them in the top 10 so far. And that's very important to, if you can have the opportunity to get some good finishes in your first few starts, get, get yourself known and out there for people to start cheering for you, might as well get them done. Yeah, he's, got, he's definitely made some forward progress. Now he's got working to the inside of his teammate Grigsby for fifth, but he tucks back in line, better opportunities lie ahead. But here comes Bronson Minnick to the inside of Kev Shearer for second. Shearer washed up the track a little bit. That opened the door for the 91 to dive down to the bottom. And he's bringing Brandon Smith with him. And now Curtis gets underneath his teammate. That's the fight for fifth place. Yeah, I don't think Shearer was happy with, with what's going on there. And Donald Curtis, a lot of these guys still trying to move forward. But I think things are starting to settle just a little bit. But I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say they've settled down. There's still a little bit of side-by-side -side action out there. And it's right now the battle for six between Earl Sear and Brian Grigsby because Kev Shearer has settled back in to fourth place but he goes wide again. That's going to allow DJ Curtis to his inside. Curtis is right in the thick of the owner's championship battle with this 22 truck. He wants to get past the 0-2 and make quick work of him to give Finn Guy Saitomi Motorsports their best chance their only chance at an owner's championship for this season. And he's bringing Earl Sear with him in the three. Remember, Earl Sear started this race back in 17th place. He's already cracked the top five. That's quite a bit of, of positive position movement there for Sear. And he's still got several positions to go. Well, four positions in total. But he really, like you talked about, being closest competitor to Sear, this, this is what he wants and certainly not what Kev wants. No, and even though as, of, as they run right now, the gap would only go down by a point or two, this would still be a big deal for Kev Shearer because he wanted to go into Rockingham with a chance to clinch the championship. Now he's got to play offense, trying to get back past these guys as DJ Curtis goes to the inside of Bronson Minnick. This is for third. Move the 22. He's gained 10 spots since the start of this race. Yeah, you see he's bringing Earl Sear with him, and... I feel like what Sears doing right now, while he can just take it a little easier, is letting those ahead of him make the, make the way. But he gets down to the where there's only like the three trucks ahead of him. He's going to start making some of these moves himself. You can see the one back there as well, Francois Chastain, moving up into fourth position. Yeah, and he has, he's had some rough luck in the last few races as well. Has the one truck, so he needs a little bit of boost at North Wilkesboro. Could he get it here? As Earl Sear tries to chase down DJ Curtis for the third position, but nothing doing on this occasion. Side by side behind them, though, for the seventh position, and we can already report one of our championship contenders has fallen by the wayside in this race. Samantha Jade, truck number 25, fallen out of this race with a mechanical DNF. And just like that, her championship hopes for 2023 are done. She will be mathematically eliminated from this championship if things finish the way they are right now. That is truly unfortunate. Even if you have a slim slim hope at getting in, getting yourself closer to the championship leader, you, you got to take it. But mechanical failures like that, yeah, that's certainly 
It's unfortunate for Kate. Meanwhile, back at the front, DJ Curtis forfeits the third position to Sear in the three. That's going to allow him to forge ahead at the line. They crossed the line only a half a tenth apart, but now Sear does clear Curtis for third, and now he can set off chasing after Brandon Smith in second, and Angel Gutierrez, who's led all 19 laps so far tonight. Yeah, but something that Sear has got to be getting told by a spotter is even though he's making up some positions, that 0-2 is starting to make back up some of the positions he lost back there. All he's got right now between him and, and Shear is the, is the 22 of Curtis. Yeah, so he can't afford to waste too much more time. He's got to close in on these guys in a big hurry as they power their way out of turn four, diving it off into turn one. And the gap is a quarter of a second between Gutierrez and Brandon Smith. But these two are starting to pull quite a ways clear of Earl Sear in third. They've got about a half second over him. So as, as they run right now, it's a two-horse race up front. But that could very well change because there are some fast trucks back there like Sear, Curtis, and even Kev Shearer in fifth, who, are, who I'm sure would love to have a say in who wins this race. Well, they absolutely would love to have a say in this. It's... It's big when you when you can hold on to this, one two like this. But Gutierrez and Smith, they got to be thinking. And you see, it looks like Sears starting to close just a little bit here. And indeed, he did well, lost a little bit. It looks like, but still hanging in right there. And they've got to be thinking about that. And he is gaining time on Smith, but he lost time to Gutierrez. So, to your point. He's gaining in some areas, losing in others, as Curtis almost gave himself up to Kev Shearer there. This is just that time in the race when the tires are starting to fall off, they're less grippy, and a lot less performance can be drawn out of them at this stage of the race. Yeah, the, the, the longer the run goes, the less grip your tires have, the more worn they get. It looks like Smith was a little bit far back there to be trying to make a move as we see Nelson Reese going after Kev Shear here. This this is gonna make make Kev a little bit annoyed because he's he's trying to get to Sear and he can't do that if, if he's got someone to his inside. Not just someone to his inside, but a teammate to his inside as well. That is not what Kev wants to see. Now he's third of the four Kings Motorsports trucks on the road. Smith in second, Reeves now fifth, Nick Breeding outside the top ten. But Still, these guys are putting on solid performances, and that's what Kev needs to do from here on out. Just steady top five runs for the rest of the season should net him a championship, unless Earl Sear starts to power through and dominate the last stretch of the season. Because as they run, Earl Sear has lopped off about four points off of, of Shearer's lead. Four points is four points in, the, in this situation. Every point that Sear can take can take from from Kev's points lead is gonna make it that much harder for for that championship to be secured by Shear, and that's gonna be important. It, it it always is important in the battle for the championship, as it looks like Brandon Smith has gotten right up to the back of the 72 of Angel Gutierrez off a of turn four. Complete lap 29, Gutierrez holds the lead, but he left the door open and then slammed it shut again. As Smith runs a little wide, that lets Earl Sear into the fray, and we've got three trucks under a blanket now for the lead. Yeah, Earl Sear, he'd love to see these two get side by side, and he can just pick one off and then go after the other, but uh, Smith keeps peeking, and, but, but well, he's actually got a little bit of a nose to the inside of Gutierrez here, so... Might open the door for, for Sear and Reese to come up here and really mix things up for these two. Could we have our first lead change of the night here on lap 31? Yes, we are. Brandon Smith powers to the inside of Angel Gutierrez to take the lead away. First lead change of the night, new leader, Brandon Smith in the 18. Yeah, and he brings Earl Sear and Nelson Reese with him. Although Sear right now is the only one who can clear. And he's just got, Sear's got one more spot, but, uh, don't look now. We've got that O2 coming up here, getting back into the mix. Yeah, and that's the problem with getting kicked up to the high side here at North Wilkesboro. You'll lose so many positions as the others freight train you on the top. He might have an opportunity to slot in into sixth place behind DJ Curtis, but.
but that's still a net loss of five positions for the pole sitter, and that's not what he wanted to see. But there's still plenty over half this race still to run. I'm sure he can fight his way back out there. Yeah, he's got a bit of work to do, but I'm sure he can he can do it. And just gotta get back in rhythm and make sure he don't lose he lose, doesn't lose any more spots. And then go back after it as soon as he feels like he's ready to go for it. But back at the front, it has now become Brandon Smith leading the train. Earl Sear runs second. Nelson Reams taking a look underneath the three. At the fight for second, Sear holds him off. And the top four, it's basically Earl Sear versus three quarters of Kings Motorsports. The only one missing from the battle for the lead is Nick Brading in the 47. The other three are giving us quite a big show fighting the number three of Team Duke's Earl Sear. Yeah, Sears got he's surrounded right now, but he, he ain't scared, that's for sure. He's he's faced things like this before. And he he's just gotta hold on and I believe he has an opportunity to really show the Kings Motorsports trio here that, that he ain't afraid. And remember, Earl Sear hasn't won a race yet this year. He very much would like to. He's the front runner to get to, to get the nod to move up to the Nitro National Series with this team. So he wants to prove his worth, and if he can win this race and close the gap to Kev Shearer, he would gladly take that and then some. But he's still got quite a ways to go to catch up to Brandon Smith, who currently leads by about half a second over this battle between Sear, Reeves, and the rest of the field. Yeah, and that's that's gonna be it's gonna be big because if Sear Sear can't get up there, he's gonna do everything he can to try to keep Kev behind him. No matter, if, it's just Smith's doing doing what he needs to do. He's minding his own business, and he's just looking back there watching his teammates give Sear all kinds of grief here. Yeah, and that's honestly all he can hope for. Because this Brandon Smith, here's another guy who hasn't won yet this year. And that's a bit of a surprise. Remember, this guy won in his third career start with in the Turbo Truck Series last year at Talladega. So, Brandon Smith knows how to get to victory lane in one-up competition. It's just been over a year since he's pulled it off. And I'm sure he'd love to break that winless trap here at North Wilkesboro as Shearer goes for third. Yeah. Uh, you, he might be teammates with Nelson Reyes, but I don't think he cares at the moment. He wants every position he can. He sees Sear ahead of him. He wants to get ahead of him and make sure that he doesn't look back. No matter if he wins this race or not, though, we all, we've all we talked about it before. We're, we're going to keep mentioning it, I'm sure, every now and then. He wants to win every race he can to lock up that title. And remember, at the top three positions are each separated by five points, so even if Earl Sear doesn't get the lead here from Brendan Smith, he still has gained five points on Shearer just by finishing one place ahead of him. So this is a very important battle for these guys because it'd be effectively a 10-point swing if Shearer would have passed Sear for second. Yeah, this that 10-point swing will be important if it happens. Right now, what might be about to happen is another change for the lead especially considering how close Earl Sear has gotten. But he does run a little wide through three and four. That's going to cost him a little bit of time, hopefully not too much, because we want to see a very close battle for the lead for the rest of this race. We're past half race distance. We're on lap 44 of 80, and this race has gone by pretty quickly, honestly, but there's been no shortage of action up at the front, at the back, anywhere in, on this racetrack. You look, you'll see some racing wherever you look on this racetrack. Yeah, you you don't you don't need chaos chaos or crashes for a good race. I mean, this is a good example right here. And you see Earl Sears dropped back right to the front front of Kev Shear here, who I would say definitely is going to be looking to make a move as we look at the backfield briefly. Yeah, I, I'm not expecting a lot of laugh traffic just yet. Yeah, but it will come though. It later on in this race, and that's what we were looking to see where the lap cars were in comparison to the race leader, and they're about a straightaway ahead currently, so not too much to worry about, but maybe maybe a little nagging concern towards the end of this race. Oh, absolutely. Anytime you got lap traffic to deal with, especially when you're not just fighting for a race, but also a championship, if, it, if a lap vehicle messes up your race, let alone your championship hopes, 
you're not going to be too happy with that driver for sure. And you talk about lap trucks getting in the way of a championship run. How about your own teammate in a battle for position? This is about the third or fourth time we've seen Shearer and Reeves go side by side for a position inside the top five. And now he's bringing DJ Curtis into the fray as well. So Curtis trying to make a run on Shearer to move himself up to fourth, knock the 2 back to fifth, and that is going to make swing a few more points into Earl Sears' favor. Yeah, he's got to be smiling under that helmet at the moment, though. I'm sure he's probably he's he's not looking in his mirror so much, but getting told that the 0-2's got passed by a cup one truck and maybe another, and you know, he saw it up there. The three is closing in on the 18 once again. This time, though, he's got no one behind him to hurry him into a mistake as Shearer finally drops back to fifth behind Curtis. Now, Earl Sears got a great opportunity to make something happen here because he's getting right to the back of the 18. He's trying to pressure Brandon, the rookie Brendan Smith into a mistake, and that's not something we've seen out of Brandon Smith that much this season. So he's going to have to really work hard if he's going to frazzle the... 18 into making some sort of error. Yeah, and you see right here, Smith, just like Gutierrez before, been handling the pressure quite well, and uh, yeah, I, th I think Smith's got a little bit of help now, because Breeze has really closed the gap after getting by a cheer earlier. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Nelson Reeves is doing whatever he can to back up his teammate in this fight for the lead, because now Earl Sear is stuck in a, in a racing sandwich here is we've got pit stops underway for the first time tonight. We were expecting this. Green flag pit stops, the order of the day. As it looks like Tegan Fox was the first one on pit road. She was running deep in the field. And... Looks like the only one right now. Oh, there's Nathan Stapleton, too. So make that two. two and we've got a whole score of trucks now coming in. So this is when the cycle's really going to start. And Earl Sears stays on the racetrack while everybody else is coming in. Oh, you see right there. Sears stayed out. It looks like, looks like Ricky Freeman Jr. in the 31 staying out. Yeah, he's he but, wants he wants a bonus point for leading a lap, and he got it. That's going to help him in his championship efforts. But what will it do for his race efforts here? As you see, Tegan Fox exit the pits. They were, they were one of the first ones on pit road. Here comes Earl Sear Freeman pits as well. Elijah Ironhouse, Igor Zhao, and Mac Johnson. I think they were the last few to not make their stops yet, but they're all coming in now as Pit Road is a very busy place. Oh, absolutely. You see all the different trucks there. So quite quite a few of them coming out here. Jacob Buholtz and a, and a few others that were running in the back. They they came in before some of the leaders did, and let's see how this shakes up. This is going to be very interesting to watch. Because the big battle on our hands now is between Brandon Smith and Earl Sear. Brandon Smith pitted a lap earlier than Earl Sear. And how about a couple of guys who stayed at, who pitted early and took advantage of those fresh tires, jumping a huge amount of cars? Nathan Stapleton in the 08, he was running just outside the top 10. He's now running seventh. He's going to be running in the top five. He's going to be running fourth when this is all said and done. Tegan Fox was running outside the top 30. They're running in sixth. And that's... That is huge. It seems like the undercut strategy has played a played a hand in, in things and really shook things up. And now the the the, the overcut strategy seems to have helped helped Earl Sears stay, Sears stay in position and it, it helped Ricky Freeman Jr. get get into the top ten. I believe he was running toward the mid pack for a while. We didn't really talk much about him till now. Yeah, I'm just so impressed with the 08 and the 88. They played the strategy so well. They knew they weren't going to win this race by doing what the leaders did. They tried pitting early, and boy, has it paid off. Stapleton runs four. Fox runs six. Chris Harvey holds the fastest lap in a race. And a 2027. that is an impressive feat for that 05 team as well. But now you look at where the, lap, the back of the field's running, they're only about a half a straightaway ahead of the 18 now. Could we see lap traffic be a factor in the last 20 laps of this race? Oh, and that would really be big, especially with with a couple of new players in the game up here in the top five. And you got you got Stapleton up there. He, 
I think he would be love to play spoiler now that pitch strategy is played into his favor. But how about DJ Curtis? He pumps in the fastest lap of the race at a 2019. Incredible pace from DJ Curtis, who's gotten around Tegan Fox and who's now closing in on the top four. Curtis could be a dark horse to win this race. He Remember, he was seven one thousandths of a second from his first career win at Talladega last time out. Wouldn't he love to redeem it with a win here at North Wilkesboro? Oh, that would definitely be that would be absolute redemption for him. And coming up second, not something to be too upset about. But when you're on the verge of your first win, yeah, it, it definitely it definitely bothers you and haunts you for a bit. Meanwhile, speaking about second, Earl Sear is done being in second, I think. And what that also did in the pit cycle, it knocked Kev Shearer three seconds off the lead. So Kev's gonna have to play catch up now because Earl Sears fighting very hard with Shearer's teammate, Brandon Smith, for the race lead, and we've got less than 20 laps to go to settle it here at North Wilkesboro. Who's it going to be? Well, that is a very good question, and right now it's definitely looking like it's Smith and Sear that we're going to be choosing out of, but one count reason to Stapleton out just yet, because if these two get to fight, they can get back up there. And DJ or Curtis, too. Yeah, and Curtis as well. You can't discount DJ Curtis. He's He's finished top 10 in every race in his career so far. How, when is this streak of his going to snap? It doesn't look like it's going to today. He's had a fantastic run. Started 13th, now knocking on the door of fourth place. Strong, strong continued efforts from that 22. Yeah, and I just happened to notice, looking there in 10th, right there behind behind, behind Freeman, Freeman Jr. How, how about that 39? Justin Whitmer there. Strategy played in his favor it looks like as well yeah he started back in 29 so an impressive run from that 39 group what should be the the works for team but they've got a lot of competition that's for sure in that department but now we've got 15 laps to go three trucks under half a second apart for the race win here at north wilkesboro this is what we wanted to see when the trucks came to north wilkesboro we wanted to see him bumper to bumper door to door racing hard for the win and that is exactly what we're getting as Smith leads Sear and Reeves with the laps dwindling away. And you saw back there just a little further DJ Curtis, he's got up to that 08 of, of Nathan Stapleton as we look toward the back of the field briefly again and well, uh, getting closer to them being a factor in this. Yeah, but I think it might still be a little while if they ever get there. And he, whoa, Curtis dives it deep on Nathan Stapleton for fourth place. Man, that was a close call for both of them. Good thing they had the car control to keep it, keep it out of the wall for those guys. But now look at Earl Sear. This is the closest he's come to taking the lead from Brandon Smith. Here he he's comes down. Here he comes down the inside. Earl Sear on Brandon Smith with 13 laps to go. Now, can Earl Sear take this lead away and power away from the Kings Motorsports teammates? It looks like he's going to clear off a four, perhaps. There he goes, Earl Sear to the lead with now 11 laps to go. Yeah, he got that point for staying out and leading for, for a lap before he came in. And now he's got the lead and he does not want to let it go. And I can guarantee Kev Shear is getting told that he's that Sears in the lead and he is probably not very happy right now. Yeah, because the the the, the points reward for seven is thirty six points. The reward for winning the race is fifty one. That is a lot of difference. If, if my math is correct, and it usually is. So, with less than ten laps to go now, Kev Shear has got to play a huge amount of catch up if he's going to have any hope of maintaining a somewhat he's gonna keep the points lead no doubt in my mind but the question is how big is it going to be if Earl Sear hangs on to win this race yeah he might be able to salvage a little bit here because it looked like from what I can see in the back he's starting to catch up to Tegan Fox might be able to get by the 88 might be able to get to get to Stapleton and salvage another few points but yeah he's he's really gonna have to work hard and he's gonna have to hope his teammates can do something about Sear and boy, that they're gonna try, and that is what we love about these turbo truck series racers. They always 
give it their absolute best. No matter what the circumstances, Shearer does get by Tegan Fox to move up now into sixth place. His next target, that blue and black number 08 of Nathan Stapleton to try and get it back into the top five. But Earl Sear, he's starting to stretch his legs out in front as we come now to six laps of racing to go. And you see right there, we're finally going to get a little bit of lap traffic as the laps get to the very final few. But I'm not sure how big of a factor it'll be because it doesn't look like any of them are side by side. As a matter of fact, last, pl last place on track is by, by themselves. Yep, so I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue for Earl Sear as long as he, if he does get to the 70 of Brown, if he can get by relatively quickly. But we have five laps to go. I don't think they're going to catch. I think this is going to be a straight-up battle for the win between the three and the two Kings Motorsports trucks behind them. Yeah, we talked about it before. That It's been Earl Sear versus Kings Motorsports all day once Gutierrez was moved out of the way. But, yeah, I honestly, you're right. I don't think that the, the lap traffic's going to play a factor. I think I think we're going to see this one through. And we're coming in, we got three and a half laps to go, and Earl Sears' lead is only getting bigger from here. He's got he's coming in around to take three laps to go. His lead was a, was about half a second. We can report Damian Krastev in the 99, also out of this race with a mechanical failure. He will finish 39th today. But the battle for the win, it continues to be Earl Sear, Brendan Smith. Nelson Reeves, but the but it's starting to fade a little bit because Earl Sear is pulling away now that we're coming to two laps to go. And it didn't help that Reeves started to go inside his teammate there a little bit. And uh, while they've been dealing with each other, you got DJ Curtis there trying to get every position he can. He may not be a championship contender, but he's going to do everything he can to get another top five finish and, and the best one he can get. He's got, he's, well, don't forget, he's racing for an owner's championship with Kev Shearer as the white flag flies on Earl Sear. He has not, he, he's been steady and consistent, but he's never won a race in 2023. Well, that's about to change now, because coming through three and four for the final time, it is going to be Earl Sear stealing one, perhaps, from Brandon Smith late in the going, but he comes off four now, and he wins at North Wilkesboro Speedway for his first win of 2023 and boy is this an important one for his championship hopes because now he's cut the gap to Kev Shearer who finished fifth today down to just 39 points yeah that is definitely not what Kev wanted to see Earl Sear did everything he needed to do he bided his time he put the pressure where he needed to on on Smith and then when things played out right he, he pounced took the, took the lead and never looked back Yep, and so it's Earl Sear winning, Smith second, Reeves, Curtis, Shearer to top five, Stapleton and Fox come home sixth and seventh, and strong run for them on an alternate strategy. Brian Grigsby eighth, Ricky Freeman Jr. ninth, and while Bronson Minnick does finish tenth today, he, along with Yadis Terzic and Samantha Jade, are no longer mathematically in contention for the 2023 championship. They'll have to go at it again in their respective series next year. We only have two races left, and this is going to be an absolute thrill ride from here on out. Next up, in two weeks, Rockingham Speedway. So, from James Ellison and from myself as well, we say goodbye from North Wilkesboro. For, we'll see you again in two weeks at Rockingham. Congratulations to Earl Sear on the win. If he keeps this momentum up like we know he can, this is going to be a close battle to the checkered flag at Homestead between he and championship leader Kev Shearer. Oh, <laughs>